Hola amigos, bienvenidos. Hi friends, welcome back to another great episode of the Language Tutor Spanish series. I'm your profesor de español, Danny Evans, and I'm so glad you're here with me on this lesson. Now, I'm excited about today's lesson, and I'll tell you why. Uh, you know, we've, this is lesson 50. We've had a lot of Spanish lessons so far here in the Language Tutor. And you know, I've heard a few comments. Um, they say, hey, Danny, you know, you've been doing a um, lot of a lot of little episodes on grammar, and um, you covered some grammar points. When are we going to get some new tenses? Well, the answer is right now on this lesson. As a matter of fact, over the next several lessons, I'm going to be mixing some new tenses along with a couple of other little things that are going to help fill in the gaps too. But we're going to be getting a lot of new tenses in the next uh, several episodes. And I just want to really help you open up your conversation abilities by giving you new ways to use verbs. And today, this is going to be the imperfect tense, uh, also called el imperfecto de indicativo. All right? Imperfect tense. Well, I want to start just by telling you what it is. Okay? Now, first thing, the imperfect tense, it happened in the past. All right? Now, we already learned the preterite. We, we learned ARs, ERs, IRs in the preterite. We learned some irregular verbs in the preterite. And by the way, we'll have some more coming up as well. We'll mix in a few more in the next, uh, in the lessons to come in the future. But, um, you know, I still have some I want to cover in the preterite. But um, the preterite happened in the past, but so did the imperfect. Okay? So we need to kind of distinguish. When am I going to use preterite? And when am I going to use the imperfect tense? So we really need to separate that first before we start trying to put it into Spanish. It's not hard, by the way, to put it into Spanish. It's going to be pretty easy, as a matter of fact. But let's first figure out what the difference is between the preterite and the imperfect, okay? Now, we know that the preterite tense happened in the past, and it, it sort of it happened and it was done and it was over with, kind of a one-time thing or something that we can put in a specific frame of time, okay? <clears throat> so I think I mentioned this on the Preterite episode. Um, you know, it, it's done, it's over with, you know, maybe um, I saw her at the store yesterday or, you know, I think I, I used the example, of, she gave me some money. Um, I mailed the letter. And that, those are things that happened, they were done, they were over with. Those are preterite tense. Now, imperfect tense is something that was going on in the past, and it, it was going on continuously. It was ongoing. It, it, it was happening over time. It's some, not something that necessarily happened one time, and it was done and over with, okay? So really, let's take a minute to look at the conditions under which we use the, the imperfect tense in Spanish, okay? Here's one, ongoing actions, like I said, anything that was ongoing in the past, okay? Something that was repeated or it was habitual. Um, here's an example I'm going to put up for you right here. We used to eat at that restaurant every Sunday. Now, see, that was a, an ongoing, repeated, habitual activity. See, that would be uh, the imperfect. Now, by the way, I want to just say something here. Anytime you would say in English, you used to do something, um, anytime you say used to, you know that's going to be the imperfect tense. Okay, so used to is kind of a dead giveaway for you. I used to eat there. Um, I used to know French, whatever the case is, that's a dead giveaway. It's imperfect in Spanish, okay? Uh, so we used to eat uh, at that restaurant every Sunday. That would be habitual, ongoing, repeated action. Um, they went to the mall every Saturday night. See, that's a ha habitual, repeated action. So that would, be, um, that would be the imperfect tense, all right? 
Also, things that were in progress in the past. Things that were in progress. Now, here's a key for you. You remember present progressive, we covered that. Present progressive, it's progressing now. That's ing, right? We use ing to say that, you know, I am studying, she is working. Well, think about things that were progressing in the past. I was studying, she was working. Those ings in the past can be the imperfect tense, okay? So they were practicing. That's imperfect. It was ongoing. All right, now, <clears throat> let's talk about when we're telling stories in the past. Okay, um, you know, we're talking about he was 30 years old when this happened. And our story begins when I was six years old. See, that would be the imperfect tense. We would express that by saying the imperfect. So age is one. Also, time and dates in the imperfect tense. So it was one o'clock. You're telling a story or describing something that happened. It was one o'clock. We would, we would say that time by the imperfect or it was on March 11th and when this happened or that happened. Um, so, so times and dates can be imperfect tense. Now, also descriptions in the past. Now, I'm talking about feelings, uh, certain conditions that you're describing, characteristics, those are also imperfect tense. Now, I just want to give you some examples of those. So, you know, I don't want to be vague and say certain characteristics or whatever. Let's get some examples. Um, look at this one. The church was beautiful. The church was beautiful. And you're talking about something in the past, and, and that was ongoing. It was a characteristic, ongoing. Um, you might say this one, a feeling. I was really sad. You know, that was, that was ongoing in the past, okay? Um, you're talking about characteristics, uh, traits of someone, how you would use ser, describing somebody, descriptions. That's the same in the, in, when you're talking about it was ongoing in the past. Like, they were both very short when they were young. They were both very short when they were young. That's imperfect. Um, weather. Weather conditions. It was really cold that day. See, that was something ongoing, okay? And also desires are feeling like, I wanted to leave that place. I wanted to leave that place. That wanted was ongoing. So there are a bunch of examples of feelings and characteristics. And again, if you used to do it, if you used to do it, then that is going to be a dead giveaway that it's imperfect. Here's an example. We used to work at the hospital. We used to work at the hospital. That is definitely um, imperfect tense. And we're not going to say used to, okay? We're not going to say used to. We're actually going to take the verb to work. For example, in this sentence, we're going to take the verb to work and put it in the imperfect. And that means you used to do it. So we don't ever say used to in Spanish when we used to do something. We just take that verb and put it in imperfect, okay? Now, I hope I've given you a good setup for what imperfect is and, and help you get it into your mind. I hope I've helped you to understand the difference between imperfect and preterite, okay? And if you still need some clarification, I would definitely Google that, you know, imperfect tense in Spanish, because there are so many great websites out there that help you understand the difference. A lot of great websites and, and teaching sites that have explanations if you need more on that, okay? So now, how do we do imperfect tense in Spanish? Well, you probably guess what I'm about to put up on the screen. The chart. Here it is. Okay. Now, a long time ago, I think I mentioned on an early episode that Spanish is a set of endings. All the tenses are different sets of endings, okay? So we have, in the imperfect tense, we have a set of endings for the AR verbs, and we have a set of endings for ERs and IRs. We know ERs and IRs like to hang out together, and they like to use the same stuff sometimes. So they do. They have their own set of endings, and AR has its own set of endings, okay? Let's start out with the AR endings. Now, one thing I want to go ahead and tell you, 
is that with the imperfect tense, the yo form and the el, ella, usted form use the same conjugation, the same endings, okay? So that's something you can go ahead and visually put in your mind is that the yo form and the el, ella, usted are using the same things, okay? And so that kind of helps you visually start laying out the chart in your head. All right, let's go ahead and put those AR imperfect endings up. The first one is ABBA, ABBA, A-B-A, ABBA. Now, I already said that L-A usted uses those too, so let's go ahead and put it down here at the bottom left. ABBA down there too. All right, now in the middle here, in the tu form, we've got ABBAS, ABBAS. Now, that looks a lot like, almost like the present tense, AS. Okay, so that's something we can mentally use to connect uh, that tu form. It's typically AS, you know, tu hablas, tu practicas, well, abas, okay? Kind of makes sense. All right, up there in the top right, this is the only one that has an accent. It's abamos, abamos, with that accent on that A right there. And that's the only one on this chart that uses any accents, okay? And now let's go down to the vosotros form. Abais, abais. Okay, once we start putting these on verbs, we can get some tongue twisters going here, but you know, we'll get those, we'll get that in a second. It'll be good. And then finally, you might be making a little get a bit of a guess right now. What would the AOS AS and Ustedes form be? It's aban. There you go. Aban. Okay. Now let's let's look at this in Spanish. Okay. I used to practice German a lot. Okay, now the verb to practice is practicar. We're going to take off the AR just like we always have. Okay, take off that AR. So we have practicar, we take that off, and now we're going to put the ending on there. Practicaba. Yo practicaba alemán mucho. Okay, now that's all we need. We don't say used to. All we need to do is put that ending on there, and it means I used to practice. All right? Sometimes I have students start going, hey, how do you say use? You don't have to. No problem. So we just put the ending on there. Yo practicaba alemán mucho. All right, now, they were studying. They were studying. Now, there are a couple different ways to say this, but right now we're just putting it in an imperfect tense. Ellos, and we got estudiar is to study. Take off the ending. Put that ending on there for imperfect. Ellos estudiaban. Ellos estudiaban. Well, guys, that's how you do the imperfect AR endings. Okay? Now, I do want to <clears throat> encourage you to practice this in conversation because, you know, it can get to be a little bit of a tongue twister at times. Like, for example, the, the verb hablar, when you're saying that, um, I used to speak, yo hablaba, or tú hablabas, or él, ella, usted hablaba. Hablaba. See there, I'm getting tongue twisted right now. Okay, so that can be that can be something that you need to practice just to get the flow down. All right. Now let's clear our chart here and let's put up the er and ir endings for the imperfect tense. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you, all of these endings start with the letter i with an accent, that e ya sound. Okay. So you're going to have the letter i with an accent and an A, all right? Now, so the yo form is ia, ia. Now go ahead and put that down in the bottom left also, ia. And take a guess at what goes in between them, in between those two there. Ias, exactly. So you see this kind of mixing the ERs and the IRs and the ARs all together in some ways. So ias, all right? Now let's go to the right of the chart. You're probably already guessing what this one is. Iamos, Iamos. In the vosotros form, I bet you're already filling this in on your chart, writing this down. Eis, Eis. And finally, Ian, Ian. All right, those are our endings for ERs and IRs. Now let's put it into context in Spanish. So I wrote letters every week. I wrote letters every week. Okay, yo escribía cartas todas las semanas. 
Okay? Yo escribía cartas todas las semanas. Okay? Guys, that's how you do ERs and IRs. Now, before we end today's lesson, I want to let you know that there are a few irregular forms. <laughs> Surprise, right? There's always got to be those troublemakers. All right, there's, there, there are some irregular forms of the imperfect that I want to tell you about really quick. So, you know, you may want to throw down a couple of extra little charts. We're going to do three that just kind of help you understand uh, some, some different styles of verbs, okay? Ser is one of them. Ser, you know, to be, popping, permanent condition, occupation, place of origin, identification, nationality. That's probably old news to you by now. But ser is one of those verbs. And so we're, we're, not, gonna, we're not gonna take a form of ser and, and modify it with e or es or whatever. It actually completely changes. So we're gonna change it to this. Era. Era. I was. Yo era. Or I used to be. Yo era. So we're also gonna put that down on the bottom left for the el, ea, usted form. And in the middle, we're gonna put eras. Who eras? All right, now up on the top right, the nosotros form is the only form that has an accent. It's eramos. We were or we used to be. And then on the vosotros part over there in the middle right, we have erais, erais. And then finally, the eos, eas, ustedes form is eran, eran, okay? So that's how we say ser in the imperfect tense. All right, now I want to clear this one off and put ir up there to go. This one, you would think it uses, you know, ir something or it might change to fui something because we did that in the preterite, but it, it doesn't even use the V that we use in the present tense. So this one changes to iba. Iba on the top left, and also on the bottom left, Iba. And in the middle, Ibas. You're probably saying it with me right now. Up on the top right, we have Ibamos. Ibamos. And then Ibais. And then Iban on the bottom right. Iban. And now let's look at one more irregular, and that is the verb ver, which means to see. Okay, now all of these are going to start with V-E-I with an accent on that I, okay? So, veía, I used to see or I saw in the past or I was seeing. Yo veía, and also on the bottom left, veía, and in the middle, veías, and then up on the top right, veíamos, and then veíais, and veían. And that's all of them. So guys, I have thrown a lot of new stuff at you this episode. So just keep rewinding. Keep playing this over until you feel comfortable. And, you know, I recommend try to, when you're driving down the road in your car or you're working, try to recite in your head the conditions, all the conditions that you can remember of when we would use the imperfect tense. Just try to pretend that you're the teacher and just start stating this. We use it under this circumstance and that circumstance to solidify those conditions, okay? Because that'll help you recognize in conversation, oh, I need to say this in the, in the imperfect tense. It helps a lot, okay? You guys, keep practicing. Also, check out the Language Tutor Spanish podcast. It's on eight different platforms right now. It's on iTunes, Spotify, all kinds of places. Check it out. Listen to it while you're doing whatever you're doing and practice with me. All right. I appreciate you watching The Language Tutor, and I'll see you next time on our next episode. I step it on the Friends, thanks for watching The Language Tutor. If you have a question for me, feel free to leave it in the comment section below the video. And please click subscribe and the notification bell so that you'll never miss any of our language lessons.